Okay, so Pi News episode 93. I was going to review this Game 5 Pi case, which is super impressive. It's tiny, but it houses an NVMe and two fans. But that will wait till Monday because we've got some very important news. The Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 has been seen. Uh, and this is an actual picture of it. But before I show this story, uh, before that we had this. Raspberry Pi 5 Compute Module 4 is weeks away. And they had a load of accessories. So this is a Compute Module 4. So they've got a CM5 I.O. board, uh, heat sink, board case, accessories. And you can see a few of the bits here. But no Compute Module 5. But then the next story, which I saw on Facebook. So this is from DIY Electronics. Uh, exciting news from Electronica. The Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 and its I.O. board have made an unexpected appearance. And we've got the first glimpse. While details remain scarce, the leaked image has sparked excitement in the tech community. When I first saw it, I thought it was fake, but it is actually a Compute Module 5. And I did check, I am allowed to talk about it because it's been announced. But it's not released yet. So there's not a lot of room on that little board. So they're obviously talking about enhanced performance. And they haven't got all the specs or anything here yet. And there's this image on the Raspberry Pi stand, which looks like the AI camera and the official Compute Module 5 in an outboard with an NVMe slot on it, a couple of full-size HDMIs, Ethernet, a couple of USB 3s it looks like, SD card slot, it's getting a bit closer. And we've got the camera and display ports here, battery mount, little power button, GPIO pins, same fan connector as the Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, really interesting to see. I look forward to testing one of those. And I usually talk about the videos I've done on Raspberry Pi since the previous Pi News, but I thought I'd lead with that Compute Module 5 story. Uh, so we had the Raspberry Pi AI camera, which is super impressive. Really enjoyed playing around with that. We got the SD card boost. Uh, so the official Raspberry Pi supporting command queuing ended up giving us much better performance on SD card. So this tells you how to do that. And also if your card is compatible. I did a video on the new Raspberry Pi AI hat, which was super powerful. Really impressed with the performance on that. And it gave me my most successful TikTok video to date. It's had over 200,000 views, which I was really surprised about. I installed Android 15 and the Google services onto Raspberry Pi 5 and showed a different method of getting Google services running with ADB. I had to do a temporary fix for my KDE Plasma because the new version of Raspberry Pi OS broke it. But uh, it's actually been fixed now and it's working with Wayland and LabWC and this is, this is it running now. I also went back a bit and tried the Raspberry Pi 3B with retro gaming and some of the games were really quite impressive on it so have a look at that if you've got an old Pi and you're wondering what to do with it. I also got sent the new Raspberry Pi display, the 7 inch display and made a tablet out of it with a battery and most recently I got sent this 4 Pi 5 rack which supports 4 NVMe drives and also 4 LCD displays. So quite a busy month. Next up, I haven't listened to this yet because I haven't had time. Eben Upton's done an interview, a truly unique UK tech story with Raspberry Pi's Eben Upton. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to hear that. This is not so much news, but I thought it was interesting for people to see. So Raspberry Pi product series explained. As our product line explains, it can get confusing trying to keep track of all the different Raspberry Pi boards out there. Here is a high level breakdown of Raspberry Pi models, including our flagship series Zero, Compute Module and Pico microcontrollers. And they just kind of laid it all out so you can see connectivity, what processor it's using, memory and so on. And uh, I just thought it would be worth linking because people might want to go through and see all the history and everything. Loads and loads in there. This was from Facebook. Uh, so Core Electronics have released this Raspberry Pi 5 case. And you can see the post here. One of my favourite Raspberry Pi official suppliers in Australia has just added four new Raspberry Pi 5 cases. To the lineup. One is a rubberized case, the other three add M.2 or extra Ethernet or extra USB 3. They are an industrial look. And you can see, yeah, like proper solid, looks a bit like a Mechatronics device. Uh, so we've got USB C, a couple of full size HDMIs, and then we've got the NVMe board in there as well. And there's a nice look of the insides and how it's laid out and everything. I was like just seeing new cases and things like that. We also had the announcement of the official NVMe drive, which I got sent a 256, one of these. And I've used it in that Game 5 Pi case you saw earlier on and another video as well. And it performs great. 
I haven't used the uh, NVMe board yet, the official one. I've been sent one, but I haven't tried it yet. Raspberry Pi announced another new product. So they've been working with Infineon to release this USB-A hub. So you can see it's USB-A to the Pi. It also is separately powered. So if you've got things like drives and things like that that require quite a lot of power, the USB sockets on the Pi aren't enough to power some devices. You'll get some warnings. So yeah, this is their offering but as it's an official product you know it'll be reliable and well made we've had hints of a raspberry pi 500 so this is a raspberry pi 400 i loved the raspberry pi 400 i thought it was a really good device uh, the passive cooling in it was excellent so it had a big sheet of aluminium in it and uh, yeah definitely look forward to a pi 500 really hope that it's got an mvme slot in it as well and it says here but there it is tucked away in a device tree file the first mention of raspberry pi 500 and also tom's hardware had the same and details on the Raspberry Pi GitHub repository and Tom's Hardware took apart a Pi 400 and uh, there was there's quite a bit of space in there I also had uh, an SSD I'll see if I can find the video I did this video which is a Pi 400 in a 3d printed SSD case so it allowed you to have a two and a half inch drive inside and I really liked it and I did loads of videos on the Pi 400 and hopefully they'll do something the same with passive cooling uh, because this was very effective even with overclocking. Another story from Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi 5 overclocked to 3.6 gigahertz, but exotic cooling didn't help push clocks any faster than air. So liquid nitrogen, a voltage mod, a new oscillator, updated software and other tweaks couldn't push the Raspberry Pi any faster. So you can see the extreme lengths they went to test it, but it's always interesting reading about it. And there's a video linked in this story, world's fastest Raspberry Pi 5, with a cool image. Jeff Geerling managed to get uh, an external GPU working on the Raspberry Pi 5. Super Tux Cart and Doom 3 can both run at 4K 60 and max settings. So using an M.2 to Oculink adapter. I did get asked about this uh, with PCs because I've got an Oculink dock, which I was really impressed with. I love it. And I actually use it as my main gaming PC. So I've got a mini PC with the Oculink dock and yeah it's great really really good but it's definitely more of a challenge to try and get it working with a Raspberry Pi and Jeff's managed it great work I thought I'd leave this in there because often people ask about AI and what projects they can do and this has got various different projects that you can use it for so this particular one was to detect when the boss was coming in the office so you can uh, start work again Jeff's in there again with his multiple AI 55 tops, car detection and tracking, safety helmet detection system. So if you're interested in AI, you might get some answers or some tips in there. XDA showed this great image. Uh, this genius created their own AI glasses using Raspberry Pi. Miroslav's project involves an AI headset that can play videos, display music and show text. Although not strong enough for YouTube or Twitter, Miroslav plans to upgrade the chip for more power. But just the image alone is really cool. Tom's Hardware again, and this is a Raspberry Pi archiving a stack of Amiga floppy disks. And you can see the stack here. I've got a stack similar to that in my loft. And you can see the uh, terminal running there as well. And it looks like an Amiga game running. So Graham Tinkers has created a custom archival system using parts from disk duplicators and our favorite SBC, the Raspberry Pi, to automatically process stacks of floppy disks and back them up onto a USB drive. Very cool. And there's a video link there as well. Look at the machinery involved. And this one came very recently. Uh, so a Raspberry Pi dash cam continues through records even when your car is off. I haven't read this yet. So you can see the dash cam on the windscreen here. Be interested to know how the battery life is. Not only does it record while you drive, but it also keeps recording when you stop and your vehicle isn't powered on. This means you're covered with a watchful eye, even if you aren't around. A bit like Teslas, you see uh, videos where people have gone near the car and damaged them and and the tester automatically records them. So 38 hours battery life, infrared support, and the ability to recharge the batteries quickly. It uses multiple cameras, four separate streams, two of which offer 1080 quality at 30, while the other resolution is 2592 by 1944. You get much better battery life at lower resolutions and it would still be decent quality. It's just one Pi that's doing it, eight gig Raspberry Pi 5. We had this Kickstarter and I've been trying to get my head around it. Um, so Digiport, next gen pocket PC, it's met its goal and it's got a compute module four with a heatsink on it. 
So they talk about game streaming and uh, operating systems. So, I mean, it's a Compute Module 4, so it can do pretty much what a Raspberry Pi 4 can do, but it's the form factor that's different on it. So it just requires a USB-C power source, supports infrared for remote controls, but there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in knowing a bit more about it. Really impressive. Uh, someone's built a Pi Pico 2 powered drone. And you can see all the information here with the Raspberry Pi camera on the top of it as well. I mean, this is super ambitious. To build your own drone is incredible. Although I did see in here, so it weighs approximately 600 grams. And in the UK, you see videos of, uh, I can't remember what they call them now, is it archivers or something? People who basically film various different things and cause a nuisance. Um, but they always say that they don't need a license because their drone is under a certain weight. Uh, and so in the UK, under 250 grams, you can pretty much do what you want with it. Something bigger, you need a license. But it is a very cool project and, yeah, super ambitious. I mean, it, you know, what a thing to make yourself. That's some skills. And I got asked to look at this 3D printed cyber deck and it does look cool. Uh, so you can see it's got a, a mechanical keyboard, a little tiny screen inside it. And there's links in there if you want to try this yourself. So Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, it looks like it's based on. So not super fast for an operating system, but yeah, lots of details in here. If you're interested in making your own cyber deck, battery powered. Yeah, there's the Zero 2W and the custom board. Nice to see so many images in there as well. Yeah, loads of images, loads and loads of detail. And look, everything's all itemized as well. And also got asked by the creator of this to have a look at this video, DIY Tinkerer. And he's also built a cyber deck, as you can see here, and this does look very cool. And uh, he'd done this a while ago and given up on it, but he's thinking about resurrecting it. Obviously, lots of the comments say, yeah, definitely keep going. And some of the specs are listed here. Great work. And this from Hacks.io. This PS1 sleeper build packs a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 for emulation and more. Lots of Compute Module 4s in this episode. Offers USB connectivity, HDMI output, working PlayStation controller ports, and an upgraded DVD drive. And if we have a look, you can see the optical drive in here. The desktop mainly to be able to burn DVDs. Look at this. A weird octopus converts the PlayStation controller ports to the front of the console to USB. And uh, from the official Raspberry Pi site as well, transfer analog film to digital with Raspberry Pi. And you can see a camera looking at the film and the spools that are spinning it around. Uses Raspberry Pi HQ camera and a Pi 4B Plus to import and digitize analog film footage. And there's a video linked here if you want to see it in action. Another great use for a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.